Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is titled Occupational Exoskeleton as Advanced Ergonomic Devices and How the Anybody Modeling System Can Be Applied. My name is Christopher Iverson and I'm from Anybody Technology and I will be the host of today's webinar. Today I am here with my colleague Morten Lund who is a senior consultant and R&D engineer here at ABT. Today we have an external speaker who is Mark Truster and Mark is an associate researcher from Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing, Engineering and Automation and he has a lot of experience in modeling and simulation of biomechanical human exoskeleton systems. And Mark is going to give his presentation in a minute or so. But just before we start, I will give a general introduction and overview to the anybody modeling system for those of you who is unfamiliar with the software or musculoskeletal modeling in general. So what is the anybody modeling system? The anybody modeling system is a software that allows you to do musculoskeletal modeling. As input, it takes motion data as kinematics and forces, and it calculates internal body loads as joint moments, joint reaction forces, and model muscle forces. Here in the bottom of the screen, you can see a screenshot from the anybody modeling software, which can give you an idea of how the system actually looks. At the moment, anybody is used in a wide variety of areas and applications. And a few examples of this is movement analysis, product optimization design, the field of sport, orthopedics and rehabilitation, and assistive devices. And the typical workflow in anybody could look something like this. So you provide the motion data as input, and then you use the body models, which are you or others have built, and then you provide some kind of environment, which could be an exoskeleton. You can then use anybody to combine these things and run the inverse dynamics simulations to calculate the internal body loads. You can then output the results for post-processing, for example, with some kind of finite element tools. But you can also close the loop completely by doing some kind of design optimization and then run this cycle multiple times. And I think this brings me to the end of the, the introduction, and I will make my first presenter instead. Okay, thank you. Um, so good morning, and welcome to everybody. Um, my name is Mark Trister. I'm a research associate at the Department of Biomechatronic Systems at the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing, Engineering, and Automation. Today, I'm going to present some of our work about occupational exoskeletons and how we apply the antibody modeling system to objectify and optimize assessment and development of assistive devices within an ergonomics technology loop. Physical work problems are still a big challenge we have to handle now and in the future, especially musculoskeletal disorders in the context of the demographic change is a big problem of almost all societies in the European Union. 60% of the workers in the EU complain about work-related health problems caused by musculoskeletal disorders. Further, the World Health Organization roughly estimates that the number of people affected by muscle and joint disorders will be doubled in 20 years. During the past decade, occupational exoskeletons attracted more and more attention. Occupational exoskeletons are active, semi-active or passive mechanical assistive devices, which, which are worn on the human body. These devices redirect external forces around vulnerable body region, regions with the main aim of preventing musculoskeletal disorders during physically stressing work tasks. Here, you see exemplary application areas where occupational exoskeletons have found their way into practice. Especially in the automotive assembly, there are overhead workplaces where exoskeletons have already been declared as obligatory personal protective devices. Further in healthcare, for ambulatory and stationary care, exoskeletons can support during manual patient handling and remaining in awkward postures, for example, in a long-term surgery application. 
as you can see on the picture in the middle. Further in logistics, especially active exoskeletons are applied to relieve the back during lifting and carrying heavy objects. Before I proceed within the ergonomics technology loop, I want to introduce ourselves. We are an interdisciplinary exoskeleton development and assessment team at the Fraunhofer IPA in Stuttgart. As you can see in the green boxes, our engineering competences are completed by other scientific competences from a medical, material, sports, physiotherapeutic, design, and biomedic, biomimetical background. This fruitful and challenging combination enables different perspectives and approaches for the development and assessment of assistive devices. We mostly do and did research and development on our technology platform Stuttgart Exit Checkers. As you can see here on the, the first version on the picture, our focuses are mostly on the research and development of active exoskeleton techn technologies which enable software-based interaction and automatic support control. Further, research and development on embedded electronic architecture and especially comfort engineering for exoskeleton mechanisms is what we are working on also with external industry partners. On this slide, you can see the second version of our access jacket as an active controllable supported vest for heavy manual load handling. Based on the experience and knowledge we could gain during the research and development of the exo jacket, we follow an ergonomics technology loop approach to support companies as application-oriented research partner in transferring active, semi-active and passive assistive devices into successful application. For the development of an assistive solution for an ergonomic problem in a work process, we always try to follow an ergonomics technology development loop. Always starting with the ergonomic problem, we first do an ergonomic analysis on site in the real work environment, which captures information and data for a more sophisticated biomechanical lab analysis. Based on these two analyses, we define ergonomic needs, which can then be translated into technical spec specifications for a potential assistive device. Based on a design concept, we can proceed with model-based optimization. After that, we set up a hardware prototype and do real testing and optimization. Before we can integrate and test the assistive device in the real work environment, we have to handle safety assessment and certification. Finally, the evaluation has to be done, which means to quantify the ergonomic effect of the developed device in the real application scenario and environment. Now further, I want to highlight how we apply a biomechanical analysis framework based on the anybody modeling system within the ergonomics technology loop. In general, always based on, on a motion and load analysis, a kinetic biomechanical analysis can be done. Based on the biomechanical analysis without assistive device, an assessment of the biomechanical effectiveness of an exoskeleton can be further investigated, as you can see on the right picture. On the following slides, I exemplarily want to demonstrate how the anybody modeling system can be applied within the introduced development loop. You can use the anybody modeling system for the ergonomic analysis on site, the biomechanical lab analysis to define ergonomic needs, technical specification, and based on a design concept, do a model based optimization. Finally, I want to conclude with a future perspective on how anybody could help for the integration and evaluation 
in the work environment. For the ergonomic analysis on site, we have two working approaches to assess physically stressing task, tasks. As a human centered approach, we do physiotherapeutic assessment, for example, kinetic work movement training, like a medical anam anamnesis to get an idea about the health state of the workers. That means to talk to the workers and to find the real person specific problem of a workplace. A second approach to, ob to objectify the ergonomic problem, we additionally apply traditional ergonomic assessment methods based on motion data to identify workplace specific problems. This is where the anybody modeling system can support to both ob objectify and identify person and workplace specific ergonomic problems and needs. As example, I brought a logistics manual handling scenario to show how anybody could help during the analysis on site. To reduce the amount of data which has to be analyzed in anybody, we do a kinematic pre-selection, pre which means to identify critical movement sequences based on measured anatomical angles. In this example, we selected we selected a sequence caused by critical high trunk and knee flexions. As you can see here, the third um, selection. The selected movement sequence can be further analyzed within the anybody modeling system by adding the load information to the human model. In this case, we modeled the lows, load as a symmetrical constant force vector. The load could all, but the load could also be modeled as a CID object with mass and inertia, which is much more realistic, especially or much more important, especially for dynamic movements. Yeah, as I mentioned, because of the integration of the mass and, and especially inertia, inertia properties. To demonstrate how the kinetics of the human body can be assessed, I brought two plots which showed that it's definitely important to have a deeper look into human biomechanics. The three different model loads show that for the L5 S1 shear forces, we reach the maximum acceptable limit already with the second load of 30 kilogram, which we wouldn't consider as critical if we would only look at the NIOSH limit for the compression forces. Between L4 and L5. If will necessary, based on the ergonomic analysis on site, we can set up a mock up of the real work environment in our lab. We can additionally make a 3D scan of the work environment to support the design of the setup. In the biomechanical lab analysis, we can do more precise motion analysis based on optical motion detection, do more precise and flexible load analysis by integrated sophisticated load measurement systems, for example, load cells um, or force transducers. And we can also do human stress analysis by measuring human biosignals like electromyography, electrocardiography, and ergospirometry. In the following slides, I want to demonstrate how you can use anybody to get from the biomechanical lab analysis to a model-based and optimized exoskeleton mechanism.
in the following model based devel the following model based development was done in the framework of the research project Exopflege, funded by the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. The focus of the project is on the manual support of transferring fully or partly narcotized patients in the pre-operation waiting room. The project consortium consists of a research and development team, mostly out of small, medium-sized enterprises, an hospital application partner and our team from Fraunhofer IPA as research partner. Based on a workshop in the hospital, a real mock-up of the operation waiting room environment has been set up to replicate the manual handling scenarios. The movement sequences were pushing, pulling and lifting the patient's legs, as you can see on the video and the pictures. The main advantages of the biomechanical lab analysis are that you can analyze isolated and repeatable movement sequences. In the ideal case, you get real workers into the lab as we had, that you can take your time for replicating the movement sequences, talk and apply, for example, a detailed questionnaire together with the workers. Based on the measured motion data, we set up kinetic models in anybody, each in the representative most loaded posture with load boundary conditions based on maximum, maximal measured load data. On the two tables, you can see the modeled biomechanical muscle and joint stresses, stresses for all three load postures. The joint stresses are leveled within as still healthy considered load cases. The healthy load cases were separately modeled with anybody to get a reference for each joint stress. For the elbow and lower back joint are modeled standing straight holding a 20 kilogram box with two hands has been considered. The knee joint stress has been referenced by a model walking with normal speed, taking the maximum of knee stress during stance phase. For the glenohumeral joint, a static 45 degree abduction holding a two kilogram dumbbell has been taken as load reference. All three reference models were an average 15th European male representative. Muscle stresses are leveled within their percentage activations. The tables show that especially for the shoulder arm system in the pushing and pulling scenario and the lower back in the lifting scenario are critically high stressed. The results can be taken as quantitative indicators for potential muscle and joint disorders within each movement sequence. To sum up, the main aim of the assistive devices, device is to reduce musculoskeletal load on the shoulder arm system, especially for pushing. Further, atossal stabilization, especially during rotated lifting of the patient, patient's legs, is recommended. Before I describe how we designed the mechanism for the pushing movement, I want to describe how we in general did virtual range of motion testing and kinetic optimization within the antibody modeling system. The exoskeleton mechanism is designed and adapted within a CAD environment and iteratively transferred to the antibody modeling system using a software interface. In antibody, we then can apply the design changes in a specific modeled load scenario. Based on the mentioned two design frameworks, we followed an optimization loop, as you can see here. Person, application and exoskeleton specific data is combined to an exoskeleton human model. A kinematic and kinetic analysis identifies and quantifies biomechanical strain outputs which are compared towards a desired approximation, whether to exit or to rerun the optimization loop by modifying specific exoskeleton design parameters. Based on the assumption to define a modular exoskeleton system consisting of a back module, a shoulder arm mechanism with an upper arm bracing, we further, based on the biomechanical analysis assumptions, decided to design the mechanism to be optimized for the pushing scenario. In the upper figures, 
you see how we in general try to understand how the support could exert for an optimal assistance between a buck module and an upper arm bracing, bracing, which is placed on the humerus. In the upper right picture, you can see how we write the attachment point of an artificial fixed force between the upper arm and the back module. On the graph on the lower right side, you can see the effect of the attachment point on the resultant glenohumeral reaction force. So we try to find a mechanism which optimally exerts the aim force between the upper arm bracing and the back module. A mechanism with an active motor unit connected to the back plate with a spherical joint and connected to the upper arm bracing with a cut arm joint has been defined as solution for the aim shoulder arm mechanism. Here you can see the final exoskeleton human model design in comparison to the scenario without exoskeleton. Exemplary biomechanical output parameters show the effectiveness of the mechanism referenced to a load model without exoskeleton with reduced hand pushing force based on the 15th percentile of permitted maximum pushing force taken from the German mounting specific force atlas. Further, from the final exoskeleton model design, you can acquire torque requirements for your aimed motor unit based on variable load boundary condition you can set on your model. Further details of the model-based design study can be found on the referenced publication you can see on the slide. The first prototype of the shoulder arm mechanism has been set up and will be tested with real workers in the biomechanical lab. The current shoulder arm mechanism is shown on the upper right picture in a pre preliminary pushing test scenario. On the video, you can see how we exemplarily assess our Stuttgart exit jacket for an overhead drilling task using electromyographic data. To conclude my presentation, I will on my last slide talk about how in future work the Animati modeling system could help to support the integration and evaluation in the real work environment um, of exoskeletons or for exoskeletons. As a perspective on digital evaluation, I hope that the videos work now. Yeah. As a perspective on digital evaluation, exoskeleton human models in anybody could be integrated or combined with holistic digital work planning tools. On the lower right side, you see an example of digital human twins acting in a holistic work environment. Holistic sequential motion and load data data can be taken from existing digital work planning tools. Further, exoskeletons can be integrated as ergonomic tools in a database to be selected and applied by industrial, by industrial engineers. Anthropometric databases can be integrated to further analyze and understand unintended side effects of the, of the exoskeletons of the exoskeleton for the whole human body. Overall, the whole working time and process. This would enable software-based design of exoskeleton-oriented manual work processes. Thank you all for your attention and I wish you to stay healthy especially during these tough times. And now I'm, I'm here and open for questions. So thank you very much for the presentation, Mark. And uh, just before we go to the Q&A session, I would just like to say a few words regarding our online resources. So if you want to know more about the anybody modeling system or anybody technology in general, you can check out our website, 
at anybodytech.com where you will find events and special dates and a full publication list. And you can also check out anyscript.org, which is our community website for people using anybody. Here you can find our wiki page and links to the repository sites. And you can also find the forum, which is located here if you, are, if you need some help from, from fellow anybody users. I would also like to point your attention to a new webcast we have coming up on November 11th. The title is Creating an Ergonomic Assessment from Recording to a Biomechanical Analysis to Report. This is a joint presentation by the AND project members, Otto Bock, Exens, IMK, and Anybody Technology, and the webinar is hosted by Exens. If you have any questions or you want to meet up with us, then please feel free to send us an email at sales at anybodytech.com. And if you have created something really interesting with the Anybody Modeling System yourself, and you would like to do a, a webcast in the future and present your results, then please feel free to send me an email at kai at anybodytech.com.